Hey guys, look, this is my instance of the forge um, and I'm using my, uh, my modular system and together with Molinet to be able to actually make a scene. You guys have been wondering how to get Molinet working in Forge. I'm going to show you how to get it working and how to optimize it for space because you know obviously you're limited with space on, on the Forge. So uh, this video is going to walk you through the steps to basically get the Forgotten Adventures pack specifically, although this should work with any other packs that you use, and then the steps that you need to take to actually get it working inside of the Forge. So this is good timing for me to put this out. A lot of my users are on the Forge and they've been asking for this. Um, I just released a, a huge release today. It's uh, May 2nd of 2021. And this system works really well with the system I've deployed. So this blank building that you're looking at here is uh, one of many in my, my library of prefab buildings that you can take uh, Forgotten Adventures assets and Tom Carthos and others using uh, Molinet and be able to drop them in and make really any kind of scene that you want. So um, I'm going to show you how to make this here uh, today, and hopefully you guys uh, end up doing some really, really cool stuff with Molinet. So let's jump into it. Okay, so these are the steps that I'm going to show you guys today. If you're already proficient in some of this stuff, you might just want to read through these steps. And you might be able to do it yourself. But you're going to start by downloading and unzipping the uh, Forgotten Adventures library. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to name the top level level folder Forgotten-Adventures. Notice there's no spaces in there. Um, spaces in other weird characters confuse Linux, and I think it's created some um, problems for some people uploading to the forge. So, you know, not sure if that's the case, but we're going to uh, do this anyway. And when I did this, I was successful with it. Uh, we're going to convert all of the assets in the library to WebP. We're going to use either image magic or um, today I'm going to show you how to use uh, XN convert. And so I'm going to show you how to use that today. If you guys are familiar with image magic and you know how to use command line or um, PowerShell, uh, it's also a quick way to do it. And I find the, um, the outputs a little bit more, um, the quality that you want it. And it also renders the uh, transparencies the way that you want it. Um, I'm also going to delete the texture files out of the library. You're just probably not going to use them as often. They're very large in size. So it just saves you space um, without getting rid of too much utility. Of course, you can keep them if you've got the space and you want to use them. Once I've done all that, I'm going to, I'm going to re-zip that whole converted library. And when I did it using image magic at about 60% quality, I ended up with a zip file of about 681 meg versus the almost four gig that it comes in um, when you download it from the Forgotten Adventures website. Then what we're going to do before we upload it, we're going to install and activate the Molinet modules, specifically core and, and tiles on the forge. And this is going to create the file that we, or the folder that we need. It's called Molinet. And I'll show you that it's going to create it within your forge uh, folder structure. Once that file is created, then we can upload our new um, optimized zip file up to the Molinet images custom directory. Now, when I did this, it I uploaded it as a zip file. It took over an hour and I have a gigabit internet connection at home. So um, I think the, it, I don't think it's, it's your uh, bandwidth constraint on your side, it's probably um, how much resources the Forge is actually applying to um, uploading and processing all of that information. Once all that's done, then you can open up your Foundry world, your Molinet tile module, and then you can hit the index files or index tiles um, button, which I'll show you guys. So with that, let's get started. So first step is we're going to go to Forgotten Adventures. We're going to go to Map Making Assets. And we're going to download this complete map making pack onto our system. It's going to be about four gigs in size. It's going to be a zip file. Next thing you're going to do is unzip that library. So it's going to download something that looks like mapmaking.zip. You're going to unzip that into its, um, its own library. And uh, you're going to find the next folder underneath is map making. We're going to change that to forgotten-adventures. Remember, I'm avoiding the space just to um, not confuse Linux and my, my Forge distribution. And then inside of that, you'll find your artificial, natural, and retired um, folders. Now what we're going to do is we're going to convert this whole thing using XN Convert. So to get XN Convert, I will link to this in the video description, but you'll come here, you'll scroll down and you'll notice there's a lot of ways to buy it. You actually don't need to do any of those. You can just go straight to here, Windows, Mac, or Linux, 
and uh, and download what you need. I did the 64-bit Windows installer. That will install XN Convert on your system. Once you have XN Convert opened, this is my instance of it, you're going to drag your Forgotten Adventures in the entire folder into here. And then you're going to go to, you can skip the actions, and what you want is output. So you're going to make sure that these are your settings that you have selected. You're going to go with source file. So you're not going to put it in a new file, although you can if you want to. You can use source file. Uh, you're going to leave this the same. It's going to leave the file name the same. You're going to uh, select WebP. And under settings, you're going to make sure that you're about 60%. You can make that more aggressive if you want to make it um, smaller. Um, we're going to preserve metadata and we're going to delete the original. And what this will all do, and I, oh, I also have keep in parent folder. So what this is going to do is going to take everything in our folder and it's going to convert it from PNG to WebP and it's going to compress it to 60%. And then we'll go ahead and hit the convert process and that will take a while there's you know tens of thousands of assets in there and so it'll take a while to convert all of those now once you're done doing that it'll replace all the pngs with webps and then you'll get something that looks like this and you will find now webp files instead of pngs these are quite a bit smaller and you should find already that your total library is quite a bit smaller now what you need to do, um, I also recommend is inside of these folders, if you do a search for textures, you're going to find um, a bunch of texture files. I've already deleted mine, but it's not a bunch. There's a couple, but it's basically like, you know, big tiles of, you know, brick. You're just not going to use those a whole lot. You may, and you can certainly keep them. But if you want to get rid of space, those are very large files that you get a lot of space improvements if you just delete those. So just do a search for texture. You'll find some folders full of things. You can delete all of that stuff. And what that's going to give us is finally a, um, you know, a, a library that's pretty efficient. Then what we're going to do is we're going to zip that library. And we're going to, in fact, I, I'll do it here. And we'll make a zip folder with our new compressed library. Next thing we need to do is uh, install and activate the Molinet system for our Forge instance. So if you go to the bazaar and you do a search for Molinet, you'll find all of the modules here. You're going to want to install at least the core and tiles. I went ahead and installed all of them. And then you'll launch your world within Forge. So here I am in my world, I'm going to enable a Molinet core and tiles, plus any of the other ones that I want to enable. And then I'll also just activate the tool once. You can see it over on the left, the hammer, just to make sure everything's completely started and registered. This will create the folder I need. Checking back over here, I've now zipped my optimized folders, and it's about 681 meg in size. And so that's quite a bit smaller and will use a lot less of your space on the forge. Okay, so now by activating Molinet within Forge, it's now created the folder that we need called Molinet. So I'm in my asset library and I see my Molinet folder. If I click on that, I have images, scenes, sounds, and tiles. You want to put your Forgotten Adventures under Images, Custom, and you can see I've already loaded mine, Forgotten Adventures. The way that you do it is you hit Upload Assets, Import from Zip File, and you pick your new optimized zip file and you go ahead and open it. Now, this process took a long time for me. It took over an hour. And you're going to see it look like it's not doing much, but you're going to see a green uh, meter slowly build up while a blue meter kind of flashes up and down. So again, it took me over an hour to actually get everything loaded in um, properly. So, so let it finish. And then once it's done, everything will be green. It'll look like it's not doing anything anymore. And you can hit done. And that's going to create then these folders. It's going to upload that zip and then it's going to unzip them into these folders. And you can see I've got my three folders, artificial, natural, and retired. This won't exist yet, this index, until you go into Forge for the first time and index it. Once you do that, this index file will be created. Anytime you go in and add more assets to this, 
uh, for example, if you subscribe to Forgotten Adventures on their Patreon, you'll see whenever they upload new assets, um, you'll be able to download those and you can then very, uh, very quickly just upload them as their own set of assets here into Forge. So back in our world, I'm going to open up Molinet, open up the tile tool, and then I'm going to hit index images down at the bottom. And that's going to take a while. It's going to take a, a little bit to index all the images. I don't think it took more than a couple of minutes, but just let it wait. You'll get a final confirmation. And then you'll be able to actually go in and do a search. I recommend doing a search for boat. That's the last uh, set of assets. And if those show up, it means you got them all. So hopefully this works for you guys. Uh, check out my other video on how to actually use the system, how to apply these drop shadows and other effects. It's it's really, really a cool system. It's being developed really heavily now, and I'm, I'm really encouraged by some of the stuff that the developer has, has planned to come out. If you have any problems with this, if these instructions didn't work for you, if you've got a better way to do them, by all means, let me know in the comments or come drop by our Discord and, uh, and tell us there. But um, I'm really excited to actually get it working in Forge. Uh, it just opens up the the ability for everyone else in the in the foundry ecosystem so hopefully that's good for you guys and have fun making your maps